right, Mopar people. Um, I committed one of the cardinal sins of Mopar, and it's stealing parts from an off-brand and putting it in my car. But, to be fair, um, when I bought the car, somebody had put a an, an S10 10 bolt um, rear end under it. So I knew I had to get that out. And Mopar rear ends are kind of hard to come by now. And there's a lot of new upgrades. So I went ahead and bought this 8.8. But it didn't start life as this. It, um, it actually got shortened about 10 inches. I'll show you that right here. So I took that much total out of this rear end. This rear is from an 06 Crown Victoria. So I kind of, I've been watching videos on this and you know, there's a couple 88 swaps, whatever, but I'm basically, I'm trying to show you how to put it into an A body, but you could do this swap on anything that it would fit in. Uh, originally this rear end was about 70 inches wide, 69 and seven eighths or something like that from flange to flange and I took 10 inches out of that so now it's 59 and seven eighths almost 60 and my stocker end was 59 inches I've got an eight and a quarter that I measured but I'll just show you the difference in these two axles uh, there's your stock crown big axle and here's the axle that I got from Summit and I'll tell you in a minute uh, why that was such a good idea overall I've got so I, this rear end's got the locker in it or a, I think it's called a track lock maybe uh, 327 gears and 31 spline axles so that's that's a good reason to have it um, so right now invested total in this rear end I'm at about two hundred and seventy five dollars and these axles come with new bearings and seals, so I haven't put those in yet. But I will. I just I wanted to get it all switched over, uh, cut down, switched over. You can kind of see my cuts. My cut was on this side of the perch. I had these perches. I got actually got those with a car, and I left these bottom. That's a sway bar bracket. I just left that on. I'll probably never use them, but they're there. They're not hurting anything. They're out of the way. Um, so I'll show you uh, just real quick what I was going to do with this. The um, here's some of my information. If you look this up, so a an 06 Crown Victoria 31 spline. Uh, if you're looking at the inside bearing diameter, it is uh, basically one uh, 140. Uh, the outside is 225.2. The bearing width is uh, 698. And everybody online says just buy the those 95 to 02 Ford Explorer uh, axles. They're short, you know. That's 27 inches versus 33.8. So that would give me about a six-inch difference at least, almost seven per side. And that would give me a nice narrow rear end sticking on there, but. Um, the bearing size is different if you see here so comparing those um, this this actually has a larger shaft in the Explorer versus the Crown Vic and they don't make a crossover bearing anywhere in the world I had even Benny Bullock at Crow Burlingame in Stuttgart Arkansas look that up for me he couldn't find it I couldn't find it it doesn't exist so I I scratched that totally and I went with, after I did some research, the 79 to 93 Ford Mustang axles, uh, which they were factory 28 spline. So Summit sells a kit. They were 28 spline, four lug. These are 31 spline, five lug, five on four and a half. That is exactly the Dodge pattern that I needed. And if you look, inside bearings the same, Outside the same, the width's the same, and overall they call them 29 inches. I measured this, I measured my other, so 33, 8, 12 versus 28, 7, 81. Uh, that gives me a total of about 
five, five inches and 31 thousand. So if you were to measure this, um, it's going to be a little bit less just because of the width of our blade that we were using. But I'm going to show you today uh, basically the easiest way that I could find on cutting this down and making it super, super accurate. Um, it, it did involve taking some measurements. Uh, one of those, which I'll show you my chart in just a second, the distance from the inside of this flange to this flange. So whatever that distance is, like I plan on reusing these stock brakes, I'll clean them up, but that'll bolt back on. My distance here was kept exactly the same since I reverse engineered this. And it's the same on both sides. So. Even after cutting down everything, I think this side ended up being 30 thousandths off of what we want it to be, and this one was maybe 60. So it's super, super close. Uh, everything works great. I just wanted to show you a quick, quick example of the difference in one of those. Uh, my new axle versus old axle. So that was probably my first step, was to measure both of those, find the difference, and then cut down both sides. This. This rear end's axles were both the same length, so that was easy. And the kit that Summit sells has equal, equal length axles. Um, other things we checked was flange, flange to flange width beforehand. Um, we also checked the play in this bearing here. Um, it, has a, it has a tolerance of in and out, and that's also in my chart. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Well, I'll just I'll jump to the chart right now. Okay. So here's that chart. Um, the compressed length here. So my A example there, that that length was two seven six five. So almost two and three quarter inches, basically. Uh, B was a little bit larger. C is twenty four. So here's another important uh, measurement to have beforehand, so you'll know how much to take off. So from, I'll actually show you, from the inside of this ring to the outside of that flange, so I can hook my tape measure and pull to there, that was exactly 24. So I measured it here, there, here, and on the bottom side. So that tube was perfectly square when I started, and it's perfectly square again, but it's five inches shorter. Same thing with this side, except I believe it was 23 and... 15 sixteenths, so just barely shorter. You know, it could have been a mistake in my measuring. You never know, but uh, there it was. And basically, I'm I plan on making two videos out of this. Just the the disassembly. We I did not make a video of taking the old brackets off here. We actually cut them off with a cutting torch, and then use a grinder to grind everything smooth. So this you'll see shortly that this was just a smooth tube that we went into. And then la the very last thing was putting the perches on. Um, perches, they go on the bottom because this is a car. Uh, we found, set the pinion angle at four degrees and had everything squared up. So hopefully you'll stick around and watch both videos. Uh, you'll notice that the summit axle does not have that, that ring. I'm assuming that's for a speed sensor or something. I'm not totally sure, but I don't need it. Um, my car speedometer works through the transmission cable, so old school stuff. But I'll have disc brakes on this. I've got good calipers. I've got good brake pads included with this. And I got the entire rear end from the guy for $50. He was ready to get it out of his yard. He had it in his Ford truck. So I ended up a good reason to pick an 06 Crown Vic axle. It's got 31 splines. I think he said this was out of a cop's car, so... That may be why it had the locker in it. Um, I'm not doing any C-clip eliminators or anything like that. This is just a street car, but uh, these Summit axles are, have to be at least as good as stock. They, uh, they fit in well. I can even show you that right now. Nothing to it. This is an old seal, so it doesn't, doesn't actually matter. They go all the way in. Maybe, maybe. There it goes. And get them to spline up. There we are. 
So my C-clip will drop back in there. I'll put my pin back, my roll pin back in. Should be good to go. And my last pin to hold the roll pin in, but it took it took two days to cut this down. I still haven't cleaned up the pumpkin yet. I'll put the cover back on, pressure wash that really well, get it all painted up. And I've got a solid rear end for under three hundred dollars that's ready to go on the car. So you can do this in anything you want to, just uh takes a little bit of time.